Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is Arrow, the eighth and final season. At the end of last season, Oliver and Felicity retired from superhero life and had a baby daughter. But soon after, Oliver was visited by the Monitor, who was like, hey, I need your help for Crisis on Infinite Earths, where you will sacrifice yourself to save the multiverse. So season eight begins with Oliver right back where he started on Lee and Yu. But this is the Lee and Yu on a parallel Earth, Earth 2, where apparently that Oliver Queen never made it off the island. So our Oliver gets to relive season one with some hilarious changes, like his mother remarried Malcolm Merlin. His best friend Tommy Merlin's still alive on this earth, but his sister Thea Queen died from an overdose of vertigo, remember that? But he's not just here for a trip down memory lane, he's here to collect some dwarf star particles, which I guess only exist on this earth. But the Dark Archer has gotten here first, and so Oliver's accosted by the Earth 2 Green Arrow. You have failed. They have a big Green Arrow fight until it's broken up by Earth 2's Laurel Lance, formerly the villain Black Siren, now redeemed as the Black Canary. She's teamed up with the Green Arrow of this Earth, Adrian Chase, Prometheus, arguably Oliver's biggest villain. This Earth is a few years behind. They're dealing with the Dark Archer of season one. It's Malcolm Merlin. Yeah, we thought so too. All about months ago. It's Malcolm Merlin. But turns out this Dark Archer is not Malcolm Merlin, it's Tommy Merlin. Yes, Thea's death turned him into a villain, and so he and Oliver have a big rooftop fight exactly like season one. But this time Oliver's able to get through to Tommy, convinces him to shut down the earthquake machine, and Oliver's got the Dwarf Star. But just as Oliver's about to head home, what is happening here? Oh, a wave of energy, Thanos dusting everyone. Our team pieces out just in time, and Earth 2 is completely destroyed. Oliver wakes up in a location central to Arrow Season 2. He's back in Hong Kong. Would you believe it? Oliver has to stop the Alpha Omega virus again, and has to fake trade it to his recurring villain, China White. But then Oliver starts to think, how do I know I can trust this monitor guy? I need to learn more about him from the ancient wisdom of Nanda Parbat, headquarters of the League of Assassins and a central location to Arrow Season 3. He meets up with his sister, Thea Queen, who's been here on her own solo mission fighting the League of Assassins. They team up with Talia Al Ghul, who, like many recurring characters on this show, is either a good guy or bad guy, depending on what the plot needs. She's a good guy when they team up to find the Sword of Destiny, but then a bad guy when Thea has to challenge her for leadership of the League. Thea wins the fight, but she has no interest in leading the League of Assassins. She's like, hey, why don't we disband it and form the League of Heroes? The name could use some work, but besides that, Talia's in. Then they finally find the ancient book about the Monitor, and it says he's not here to stop Crisis, he causes it. But just then, the Monitor teleports Oliver back to the Arrow Bunker, and not just him, but his grown-up children from the future. Yes, remember last season, instead of island flashbacks, we had future children flash forwards, where they're living in a dystopian star city and had to band together to save the day. Now they formed Future Team Arrow and fight against the infamous Deathstroke gang, led by none other than John Diggle's son, J.J. John Jr. In fact, he just killed Wild Dog's daughter Zoe, and as she's dying in their arms, that's when they were teleported here. Grown-up William became a tech genius billionaire and remembers Oliver because they spent some years together, but his newly born daughter Mia never met her father because he died when she was a baby in this crisis. Also on the team is Connor Hawk, son of recurring villain Bronze Tiger, who joined the good guys at the end of last season but died. Turns out he gets adopted by John Diggle, but it hasn't happened yet. The series of events leading to it have just begun. So the kids give Oliver the bad news that the future sucks, and the future's followed him here when the Deathstroke gang attacks. But it's not John Jr. from the future, it's the original founder of the Deathstroke gang, Slade Wilson's other son. So Oliver trains Mia to be the new Green Arrow, and together they stop the Deathstrokes. But now back to the bigger problem of Crisis. They think they can build a weapon to stop the Monitor, but the plans to build it are in Russia, the flashback location from Arrow Season 5. They meet up with Anatoly, who was Oliver's best friend, then a villain for a while, but now best friend again. He helps them get the plans, but they run afoul of the Bratva, and long story short, Oliver and Mia have to team up for some good old Russian cage fighting. So the gang's all set to take down the Monitor, but turns out secretly working for the Monitor is Lila Michaels, Diggle's wife and head of Argus. When they confront her about it, she's like, no, trust me, we're the good guys, and has them tranked. Oliver wakes up to find the world weirdly normal, except that back to life is Mayor Quentin Lance. Oh, I forgot how much I missed him. There's a bomb threat that goes bad, and boom, but Oliver doesn't die, he wakes up. Yeah, he's stuck in a time loop. He goes through it a couple times, but no matter what he does, Quentin always dies. Eventually, Oliver realizes that's the lesson here. He can't save Quentin. The only way to win is to accept that. Yes, it's an allegory for Oliver's own death in crisis. Yes, the Monitor is the good guy and needed Oliver to understand. So Oliver wakes up, but wait, where are they? He's back on Lee and Yu. Their mission now is to build some science thing, and for fake science reasons, it has to be built here on Lee and Yu. The rest of Team Arrow is flying in to join him, including Roy Hart. Harper. Yes, he's back. Last season, he quit the team again because he was dealing with the bloodlust of Lazarus Pit fever. But Diggle tracked him down like, hey man, we can work through this together. But they're not alone on the island. Their plane is shot down. Luckily, everyone's okay, except for Roy, whose arm is pinned and they have to amputate. Back on the team, one day sucks for him. But who shot down their plane? It is Fires, the season one island villain who, for fake science reasons, is back to life. But also back to life is Oliver's original trainer, Yao Fei. So while they build the science thing, Team Arrow's having a big old fight. Finally, Lila activates it and is like, oh, 
oh, I know what I've got to do, teleports out of there. She comes back a bit later with a fresh new space outfit, like, hey, my name's Harbinger now, and Crisis is here. Now, Crisis on Infinite Earths is the epic crossover event that all these CW hero shows have been leading up to. To do a complete recap on Crisis, I'd have to recap all of the Flash and Supergirl, which is a lot. But long story short, someone's destroying the entire multiverse with a wave of antimatter energy, so the Monitor's assembled a team of heroes to stop them. Among them, you may recognize Sarah Lance, who got her start in Arrow Season 2 as the Black Canary, but is now the White Canary, time-traveling captain of the Legends of Tomorrow. So Green Arrow leads the team of heroes as they fight Dementors, and Oliver fights to the very last, running out of arrows and sacrificing himself so the planet can be evacuated. But his daughter Mia refuses to accept that, searches the multiverse for a working Lazarus pit, puts him in, and boom, Oliver back to life, but with feral pit fever. They bring in John Constantine to do the ritual to save his soul that they did on Sarah back in the day. They travel to Oliver's personal purgatory of Lee Ann Yu, and long story short, track him down, but this random dude shows up. He's like, what's up, man? I'm an all-seeing being called the Spectre, and it's your turn, Oliver, to become the new Spectre and save the multiverse. Long story short, the heroes lose, and the multiverse is destroyed, except for a select few heroes stuck outside of time and space, where they meet a newly Spectered Oliver Queen. He teleports them to the dawn of time, where they can fight the villain, the Anti-Monitor. There's a big Avengers moment, they fight more Dementors, while Oliver goes for the 1v1. It turns into a Dragon Ball Z beam blast battle that ends in the only way it possibly could. You have failed this universe. So boom, blows that guy up, but Oliver is dying for real this time, sacrificing himself not just to save Star City, but the entire multiverse. So the gang wakes up and Oliver's put the universe back to normal, except wait a second, Flash and Supergirl lived on different Earths before, but they're now on the same one. Yes, the multiverse has been compressed. All these shows now take place on Earth Prime. This has a bunch of weird consequences, but basically it's a full CW-verse reboot. And with the heroes all living on the same Earth now, they decide to form the CW Justice League. Now back to Arrow, we actually first check in with Star City of the the future, which is no longer a dystopian wasteland, it seems to be a great place. Mia Queen is not a hardened vigilante, but a happy normal billionaire heiress whose boyfriend's proposing, oh, it's Jiggle's son John Jr., not the leader of the Deathstroke gang, but a great guy. But Black Canaries Laurel Lance and Dinah Drake have traveled here to the future because it does not stay happy for long. Long story short, they team up with Mia for some future adventures in the potential spin-off Green Arrow and the Canaries. But now back in the present, everyone gathers to honor Oliver's sacrifice, but his reboot of the universe has caused some interesting side effects. For instance, Diggle and Lila have their daughter back, who was erased from the timeline due to Flash shenanigans, long story. And also, Oliver's mom, Moira Queen, is back to life. It's unclear what the rules were, but apparently in at least one universe, Oliver managed to save her, so hey. This means Tommy Merlin, also back to life, still flirting with Laurel. And Quentin Lance, back to life for real. Not back to life, though, is Oliver's original Earth-1 Laurel. Earth-2 Laurel's like, why did he pick me? Why didn't he bring back your Laurel? And Quentin says, because baby, you're my Laurel. Oh, the tears. Also conspicuously absent is Malcolm Merlin, although I guess in Ratchet respect, he was never actually redeemed, he was always kind of a villain. So to tie up loose ends, Roy gets a robot arm and gets back together with Thea again so they can live happily ever after for real this time. Then it's teased that John Diggle might become the Green Lantern. All right, I'm in. And as Star City unveils their new statue paying tribute to the Green Arrow, there's an awesome flashback to the hood of season one in an epic all new fight scene, paying tribute to the fight coordinators and stuntmen, the real heroes of this show. Then Felicity Smoke is back. I was worried she wasn't gonna be in this season, but she does make an appearance, meets her adult daughter, and we catch up to the end of season seven, where a future Felicity meets with the Monitor and mysteriously walks off with him. She arrives back in the good old Queen Consolidated building where she's reunited with her love, Oliver. Yes, Phil Oliver is back on for good this time. They're in the Spectre afterlife or something where they can live happily ever after. And that's how Arrow comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies. And if you love this recap, hit the join button to support the channel as a member.